In the last video, I introduced you to the key editor, and I mentioned that along with note information, we're also able to see controller information. And by default, the type of MIDI controller information that we're looking at is velocity, or how hard the notes were played. But there's all sorts of different MIDI information that you can edit in the controller window. Right now, if I were to click on that velocity indicator, it will call up this little menu and it will show me the standard default MIDI controllers that are selectable at any time. And right now, velocity is the only one that has a little asterisk next to it. That asterisk means that that controller exists on that MIDI event. In other words, the event that I see in the project window contains velocity information and was recorded with velocity information just like all notes are. So the velocity will always appear in the controller window. But then there's some other controllers that we can see, including pitch bend and aftertouch and a whole bunch of other ones. The modulation wheel, which is MIDI continuous controller number one, is a popular one, as is the main volume, which is continuous controller seven. And another really popular one is CC64, which is Continuous Controller 64, and that happens to be the sustain pedal. So if you have a sustain pedal plugged into your MIDI controller and you record a performance using the sustain pedal, then you'd see a little asterisk next to the sustain. But right now, the only controller that we can see is velocity. But what we can do is input the controller changes after the recording has been made. For example, let's say that we wanted the sustain pedal to be down during the C major scale run. So what I can do is I can select the sustain controller and now I'm looking at the sustain information and there isn't any, or if there had been, then we would see that little asterisk next to sustain, but there will be afterwards. But what I'm going to do now is grab my pencil tool by typing eight on the top row of keyboard buttons to get my pencil tool, or I could come to the toolbar and find the pencil icon and click on it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a full on continuous controller right at the top of this graph and so I'm going to click there that will put a sustain pedal on so now when I play that performance back see how all the notes sustain let me hit undo and just remind you of what it would sound like without the sustain pedal going down So if I click and draw a sustain of 127, that's the same as the sustain pedal going down. But I wouldn't necessarily want the sustain pedal to be on the whole time. So with a sustain pedal, you need to turn it off when you don't want the notes to be sustaining anymore. So let's say that I wanted to have the sustain pedal come up at measure three. Well, here's measure three. And so what I'm going to do is come to the bottom of the controller window and input a controller of zero. This range goes from 0 to 127, as does a lot of different control numbers. So now when I play that performance back, only the notes in measure 2 will sustain. The ones that are in measure 3 will not. Now there are all sorts of different types of MIDI controllers. If we click on that controller selector again, we can go to the setup tool and now you can see that there are two columns, one for visible controllers and another one for hidden controllers. Now what you can do is if you use a specific controller that is not defaulted to be visible, you could choose from the list of controllers. For example, if I wanted to use the number 65, which is portamento on and off, then when I have it highlighted, I can click this little button and that will add it to the list. And now now, when I come back to the controller selector, now I'll be able to see and edit the control number 65 at any time.
And that controller lane setup is systemic, so it's part of the program. You won't have to do that in every single project that you work on. Instead, controller number 65 will now show up in the controller lane of every MIDI event you click on, regardless of the project that it's in. And just like I promised, see that little asterisk that appeared next to the sustain controller? That's because we manually inserted control number 64, the sustain pedal, in the controller lane. And therefore, that little asterisk tells us that that type of controller does exist on this event. Now this first controller that we talked about is the sustain pedal going on and off, but there are other types of continuous controllers that have more data than just all the way on or all the way off. And one of the most popular ones is the modulation wheel. That's that wheel that you find on usually the left hand side of your keyboard, your MIDI keyboard if you happen to have a modulation wheel. So what I'm going to do now is close this key editor which will take me back to the Cubase project window and I'm going to kind of reverse the order here. I'm going to mute the piano that we had recorded and I'm going to re-enable the analog pad track because when we recorded this track we added some of the modulation wheel going up and down represented by this little mountain of information on the event. So when we double click this event and open the key editor, if we zoom out here a bit by typing the G key on our Mac keyboard, we can see all of the events. But now when you select the controller editor, you'll notice that not only does velocity have an asterisk, but the modulation wheel also has an asterisk. So if I select the modulation, now we can see the mod wheel going up and down, and then I turned it all the way up here, well, about halfway up towards the end of the event. But you can also draw in your own controller information. So you'll notice that this little mountain didn't get all the way to the top. In other words, the modulation wheel wasn't rolled all the way forward. But let's say that I wanted to roll it all the way forward. What I can do is I can click and draw in new controller information and now when I play that part back, you'll actually hear the modulation wheel going all the way up. So that sound is going to get a lot brighter. Or if I didn't want it to go up quite so high, I could just draw in a much more rounded mountain. So that's how you can draw in your own continuous controller data using the controller lane. And bear in mind that different MIDI data will be either on or off, like the sustain pedal, or will be completely continuously controlled, just like the modulation is, with lots of different values in between 0, or the bottom of the scale, and 127, which is the top of the scale. And now that we know a bit more about the key editor window, let's learn about the drum editor.